I'm joined here today by the one, the only, I don't even have to introduce him. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. It is, of course, Commander Dale Brown of Dust, the Detroit Urban Survival Training. What's going on, sir? How are you? Detroit Urban Survival Training. Thank you for having me. Uh, of course, uh, I appreciate you making the time. Uh, the big story this weekend, of course, we saw you at a UFC event. And I think for those that weren't paying attention, they, they were just watching the TV and thinking, what on earth is uh, Dust doing here? Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> if you weren't paying attention, but he was um, TMZ Sports put out something about uh, the event. Um, and the fact that I was working with the pro fighter, um, Joaquin Buckley, a uh, great young man. And I'm glad he brought me into his corner. So very positive. So how did that come together? Because I know he touched a little bit on, you know, you did a better job promoting the fight than the UFC did. How did that all come together? Because uh, we saw people, we saw you guys training together, and then all of a sudden, like, it's happening. You're going to be one of his coaches. Yeah, yeah, it came out. He said, you know, I want to see if this training is real. And he showed up, very respectful, very positive. But, you know, he said, hey, you know, I, I don't know if this, they, this these training is, is real or not. I've never seen a lot of these techniques and, you know, disarming a gun, disarming knives like that. I don't know. I just, you know, I got to see it for myself. I'm a pro fighter and I've been an MMA. I'm an MMA fighter that's a professional. And, you know, I just got to see this stuff work. I mean, let me see if it's real. And so I was glad he came by. We, we get this often, actually. And so I like it when people come by to check it and test our stuff and, and experience it for the first time because it's amazing for them. And he was amazed. And uh, halfway through, he was like, wow, this is amazing. I mean, he goes, uh, you know, I, I had no idea it was, it was this real and this serious. And, it's amazing. So, you know, that's when he decided to make the video um, that um, that he did make. And uh, I, I appreciate that, that he actually exposed a lot of people that may not have known that our training is real. It's really used in real life in Detroit for 26 years. And so we've had a chance to test our training in the real world against actual attackers. And so he appreciated that coming from where he's from in St. Louis. Uh, he can acknowledge or he can rel he can um uh, basically he, he sees the training as applicable to his life in St. Louis before he was in sports or in, in the sport he's in now as a professional fighter. So he saw the applicability and, uh, we're just glad he enjoyed it and, uh, shared it. And then he called me back, uh, right after that, about two weeks later, I was like, Hey, you know what, would you consider being in my corner? Cause a lot of things you said, a lot of things that you shown, you know, I think would be applicable and would be helpful in this, in my sport. And I think it'd be great. And I agreed with him. I said, you know what? There's a lot of things that I can share. A lot of it's psychological as well. It's not just physical. Uh, there's physical tactics from his coach, um, uh, uh, Marcelago, uh, Joaquin Marcelago is is amazing. Uh, those coaches he has are amazing. They're great guys, great coaches. So the main thing that I could help with is uh, contributing, uh, you know, a couple moves, some tactics, but a lot of psychological, survival-minded. Uh, strategies that deal with your motivation and performance uh, in uh, high performance situations. When you first had like a, a pro UFC fighter want to come see your techniques in the gym and stuff, how cautious are you? Because I assume you have a lot of guys that they want to prove it's fake and they want to push you and stuff like that. How cautious were you when Joaquin first came in? Oh, uh, not too cautious. We, you know, we invite them in. Uh, we just make sure that they're not going to do something that gets them, you know, um, uh, injured because it's really serious. What we do is really serious. We don't want to hurt people. Want to make sure they have the right attitude. Um, it's good to test, but you know, and, and see if it actually you know does work. But you don't want to do something that where a person goes to an area where it's life and death, and that's where it gets really serious. So I think a lot of people want to know for you, like how familiar are you with you know MMA, the UFC, and stuff? Was this something that you were into before? Is it just now now that people are seeing you, you have more guys working with you? How familiar are you with the sport? Oh, I'm familiar from the very beginning because you know I was. Um, uh, I watched UFC one <laughs> oh, <so wow. laughs> live on TV back in the day. So for me, you know, this is part of my history. Um, you know, Tank Abbott was uh, amazing. And I still remember him the first time I saw him fight. Uh, uh, awesome, awesome guy. And uh, so, you know, I remember the, the originals. So for me, I've been watching the MMA, uh, you know, since its onset, since the beginning. And if I was a kid and I would, if I was a kid, I would have taken a lot more MMA uh, fighting than uh, the martial arts that I trained in. So. I just didn't exist when I was a kid, so I didn't get a chance to see that. So for you, how was that whole experience of being in the corner and stuff? Obviously, you weren't in the packed arena since you were in the apex, but that's still a unique experience. Not a lot of people get to experience that. How was that for you? Oh, amazing, amazing. And, and you know, for Joaquin Buckley, he said it was a great experience as well. The people were cheering for him, and he felt great about the fact that people were cheering for him. And I, I did too. I thought it was great. And um, it was very, very positive. So all I can tell you is if you haven't been there, Definitely, you want to go to a UFC fight. It's an amazing experience. 
Uh, what Dana White has put together is an amazing, uh, structured, professional, highly structured event. I could, I've never seen something so structured in my life anywhere in the world. That UFC event from top to bottom is incredibly professional. All the people, the um, the entire structure of the event, it's top notch. There's nothing like it. So how did you navigate the actual coaching aspects? I think people were trying to figure out, were you going to be in the corner with, you know, a plastic gun teaching them things? Were you going to step in? Were you going to make it about yourself? How did you sort of approach that? Because he has real coaches that he works with often. How did you navigate that? Oh, perfectly. Because uh, my training corresponds with uh, any type of human performance. So it just helped him, um, you know, with another aspect of, of dimension. But, uh, you know, his coaches are excellent. So, you know, we, we worked great together. And, and the coaches and I get along great. His uh, standard coaches were awesome. They're, they're truly professional. Um, and it was great working with them as well. So we were all together all the time. So it, was, it, was a, it really it was a team effort. We were together for days. And so we literally trained together. Um, I got to see a lot of the, the, the uh, sport aspects of training. It's amazing. And uh, up close and personal with a professional fighter. That's a unique experience for me. Although I've been around a lot of pro fighters, they're usually learning my training. I'm not usually learning their trade. Um, and so the pro fighters have come to my, my school in the past, uh, throughout the past 26 years. They're coming into the school, learning my tactics. I, I didn't have time to really go into learning theirs. So it was great to immerse myself into a pro fighters uh, experience and their camp and be around their coaches and also to be able to contribute my uh, knowledge over the past 26 years that can help him uh, especially on the psychological side and some of the tactics. So we do have some tactics that are that are good for uh, any sport, especially a sport fighting situation. Absolutely. And so ESPN, I mean, honestly, they dropped the ball. Everybody was waiting for the moment, went to the corner. People wanted to see you go to work and they went to commercial instantly. For those of us that unfortunately had to watch an E-Trade commercial or whatever it was, uh, what were you doing in the corner? Like what what did you, you know, do when uh, cameras went off? I went over, you know, spoke, uh, talked to him, coached as well and said the positive things need to be said. And, and uh, also during the fight, I was uh, you know giving some of my opinion uh, as well, but I was very um, supportive of the coaches. They're right on point. So they're, they're playing, they have a, a, an actual plan. So they're not just out there. I don't know if people know that they have an actual strategy for how they function. And so it was great to be a part of that. And I got to reinforce it and you know help with that as well. So we were all on the same page. Uh, what did the coaches tell you about your participation? Like, uh, what, what sort of role they apply to you? Because if they don't figure that out and you're in there giving instructions while they're giving them instructions, that would have been just all over the place. Nope, they're all the same. So, you know, we're, we're all on one page. They supported me. I supported them uh, because it's all about uh, Joaquin Buckley's uh, development and winning. And that's what he did. So all I did was kind of melt in and uh, meld in. There was uh, absolutely positive flow. We had a, a really good flow between myself and the, and the uh, coaches that were already there. So let's get to the actual fight. I think a lot of people were expecting, you know, big spectacular first round knockout. Both guys are known for that. What did you think of the actual fight? I think it surprised a lot of people when it went all three rounds. Yeah, it was amazing. That just shows you which with the level of competition you have. So we have two highly skilled competitors that are, that are very dedicated to outcome. You're going to have a knockdown, drag out fight. And that's what you saw there. And both of them were great contenders. They were both <laughs> using skill set. Uh, I think Joaquin Buckley had more options, uh, more intelligent options, and he used them. Uh, and But the other guy was excellent. That other guy was outstanding. So it was very close all the way around, except Joaquin Buckley, I think, had more um, strategic skills that he was able to implement uh, more consistently. The other guy was stronger, I think, in some ways. Um, but I think that the, the, at the end of the day, um, the judges got it right. I think it was really, really clear. I think a lot of people were kind of expecting you to. There's a lot of coaches that like to make the spotlight on them. We've seen guys win the belt and the coaches is running around with it. I think people kind of expected something like that, but you didn't take that approach. We saw you. You gave the coaches their shine. Like, how, how did you sort of come up with that? Like, did you have a strategy or is it just kind of natural? That's the way it happened. Yeah, no, my strategy is to support the, the fighter. Um, I don't exist. My, my whole objective is to do what I can to contribute through um, my system, my training system, uh, to this winning of this professional fighter. It has nothing to do with me. I'm completely void of, uh, you know, in my perspective, I don't exist in this situation. I'm just here to support the winning of this person. And the best way I can do that is by giving them whatever advice, whatever strategies, whatever tactics I have that I can share with them. 
and they can and support him and his coaches. And that's exactly what I did. So, you know, I, I was really surprised he called me up to the microphone. I, I had no idea. He had called me three times because I didn't hear him at first. He was like, Dale. I was like, who's oh. someone's calling someone? Dale. I was like, what? Dale. I was like, oh, me. You want me to come over there? I wasn't, I really was not even thinking I would, I was just, I was so shocked and, and um, happy about the, the, the outcome. I just, it was amazing. Uh, so I was still in like awe at the, you know, at the whole event. And I was looking around the crowd. It was a lot, there's, there's hundreds of people in there. Like, I think it was like a couple hundred people in there. And they're a very motivated crowd. So I was looking around, enjoying the, the event itself and being in awe of these two fighters when he was yelling my name. I didn't even realize he wanted me to come over there. So and I definitely did not think he was going to call me over. That was not something that was planned. So it's really no, I, I totally did not know. <laughs> did, did you get a little bit nervous? They were going to start asking you questions because the way Paul Felder yeah. was talking, it seemed like he was going to ask you. I was like, boy, I really put him on the spot. Say, what were you thinking? I was going to say, well, let me get the coach over here, the oh, yeah. primary coach. You know, I'm glad to be here. I'm just here to support. That's all I was going to say. It was like, hey, um, well, I'm just here to support and support whatever the coach, the primary coach wants to do. I'm just here to support that and then add my two cents in that, you know, that may be helpful as well. Uh, but they're, they have a great plan, a great team. Um, I'm just glad they allowed me to be a part and to contribute whatever well, small part I could. Uh, and that's why I consider I consider I, I a small part. My small part, I believe, is good um, and good for uh, him as a fighter. Uh, but I think that most importantly, his primary coaches are the ones that are, set, are the reason for his overall success, of course. And most importantly, that young man. Joaquin Buckley is amazing. Uh, he is self-taught. I don't know if many most people know this. He's self-taught. He literally has no master. There is no one that trained him that can claim his mastery. He self-taught before he went to Abu um, Abu um, Abu Dhabi and uh, did the, the kick where he jumped in the air and knocked the guy out. And his, his video got 20 million views. He actually is the only person that trained him prior to that point. That's crazy. He watched videos and trained with his friend and in St. Louis and wherever else he could. And he just simply learned from watching and imagining and using self-determination. And he was able to become a world level competitive, uh, world, world champion. I mean, that's the goal here for him. And I believe he can do it because he has the drive and commitment to the outcome. And so imagine that though, he, he himself trained himself Ended up going to Abu Dhabi and doing an incredible kick that knocks someone out that so many people around the world in every profession was amazed by, including myself. And he did it himself. Then he got coaches. So let's understand his coaches came after that great kick. That's just amazing. Well, what did you think of him, you know, asking you to come in in order to help promote the fight? Because a lot of people, they have the highlight reel and then we never hear from them again. But it sounds like he's doing the right things marketing wise to stay relevant and have a ton of people watch this fight. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, you know, we did a lot of things outside of the uh, camp area. We went uh, to all over the strip. We went all over the place, uh, not just social media. We physically went out and met a lot of his fans, a lot of my fans together. And as a result, you know, gave more, brought more and more attention to the UFC, uh, both before and after the event to make sure that people watch the event, to watch the fights. And we, that we did it in Las Vegas. Uh, we also pushed it out here uh, in Michigan because uh, we wanted more people to watch as well. And we had a lot of positive feedback. So we're just happy to be a part. I know you have a bit of a complicated relationship with the MMA community. I feel like a ton of fighters, they want to meet you in person so that they can debunk stuff. People are always questioning your methods. Do you feel like you earned the respect from the MMA community with this weekend? Like, look, I was in the corner. I did things right. I was professional. Like, you didn't make it a big show. You feel like you finally got the respect from people? Yeah, and I think I think what was, was amazing to me was the, the professional... Um, positive communication and experience I had with every single fighter. I mean, they were super nice, super positive. You know, there was no negative feedback. Um, the uh, There's a champion that um, that I think was amazing guy. Um, I saw his fight and he won that fight. He has the highest number of uh, fights in, in MMA history. Uh, Jim. Um, oh, Jim Miller? Yep, Jim Miller. Yeah. And I met him and that was an honor he asked to take a selfie with me and his coach was like, yeah, we watch all your videos. And wow. I was honored by that. You know, I think that's, that's incredible. Uh, here's this, this MMA champion that, you know, actually chose to want to take a picture with me at all. And then <laughs> he's like the champion. And then he's super positive, super professional and goes out and wins again after I met him. It was, it's, it's incredible uh, all the way around. And then his coach was really positive, professional guy. So I just met a lot of professional people in the UFC in general 
uh, and they were super positive with me and uh, very professional. And that's even the staff. So I, I want to say that I wasn't sure what to expect either um, <clears throat> because there are some, you know, negative type people online. But every person I met in person, every single one of them, ultimate professional. Uh, so every UFC uh, competitor, coach, and the people working at the events, all superb people, very professional. All right, one last question for you, and we'll let you go. You've been very generous with your time, but a lot of people mention you're undefeated as a coach now officially in the <laughs> UFC. What does the future look like for you in the UFC? Can we expect to see you in uh, Joaquin's corner more? I mean, what, what's going to be your involvement going forward if you figure that out? Hey, it's possible. You know, anything's possible. We're open. Um, uh, Dana White, uh, I heard, said some positive things about having me there. So uh, that's hearsay, but it could be true, and uh, it comes from a really good source. So I hope that's true, and I look forward to doing anything I can to support the UFC. Um, our objective is to take our training and help to make sure that competitors, um, you know, that ultimately the reason why I, I want to be involved in any way I can is that our training system uses psychology, law, and skill to help people manage real life threats so that they can survive. So it's a survival system. So I'm glad that you interviewed me because it gives me another chance to get to the core audience we want to reach with our training. And that is that we're not competing with MMA. We're not competing with jujitsu. This is not a sports system. This is a survival system, and that means that it teaches psychology, law, and skill in that order so that you can understand how to read body language of predatory people that are violent criminals. So you can be ahead of that, whether you're an MMA champion or a jiu-jitsu student, or whatever you are. We want you to be ahead of criminal uh, conditions and making sure that you can read their body language and make sure you can project your body language so that you don't create an adversarial interaction that leads to violence. And then understand, making sure that all MMA and jiu-jitsu students understand law uh, both civil and criminal. So when they're making a decision whether to fight or not fight or what to say to someone, they're doing it in the best, most legal way possible uh, so they don't get themselves in trouble. And then ultimately, you know, we emphasize, of course, guns and knives um, defenses so we can remove that fear of guns and knives and also uh, how to not injure people specifically, how to use a what we call threat management continuum. So as a civilian, having the ability to understand how you can increase your likelihood of survivability and that means including uh, not being prosecuted. Um, that means that you use the correct level of force based on the level of threat that will be interpreted by others. And so that's what we have as a survival system. You, our, our, our team members uh, are jujitsu students. Our team members do practice all kinds of uh, different martial arts systems and sports systems. And then they train here because they like the other kind of training that they know they need because it deals with real life situations. But this in no way takes the place of a person who loves MMA or lo jobs, lo uh, excuse me, loves Krav Maga or uh, loves uh, Jiu Jitsu. If you love any of those systems, you don't replace them with our system. You just augment your, cert your, your current condition with our training system, which increases your survivability. Well, there we go. Thank you so much, Commander Dale Brown, for the time. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll see you at more UFC events. I feel like that was a lot of fun, and you sort of did it, it the right way. So hopefully, was, we'll see, see it, more of you. Can, every part, please do. It is a very professional, well-run organization. All I can say is Dana White's organization, the UFC. I I, I can't tell you. Uh, I was in the military. I can tell you it was, this was uh, like a military operation, extremely structured. It is not a you know fly-by-night kind of thing. It is world-class, and any organization that uh, operates this way is is definitely you know outstanding.